In this tutorial I'll start sculpting the basic primitives into more freeform designs. So I'll start by using a cylinder and I'm going to open the option window and choose zero end caps so that I just get the tube surface. And I'll grid snap that to the origin and then straight away go into the left view and set my pivot to the base. And then move the cylinder up so that it sits on the ground plane. And then I'll just do a non-proportional scale to create the basic charger shape. Now to be able to sculpt the surface I first need to display the control points by choosing the CV hull display over here in the control panel. And then instead of using pick object I'll use the pick CV tool. And now I can drag select a whole group of control vertices. And then just use the transform tools in exactly the same way as we did when picking objects. So I can scale those CVs and start to sculpt the shape. Now that worked nicely because the pivot point was in the centre of that group of CVs. But if I now do a pick nothing and a pick CV again, and this time drag select this top group of CVs, then scaling these moves them towards or away from that pivot point. So a tool that we use a lot with CV sculpting is centre pivot. So now the scaling works locally around the centre of those CVs. And if I want to keep sculpting, I can keep using pick nothing and then pick CV. And the centre pivot and scale to resize the CVs. But what I can also do is use the control and arrow keys to step through to the next row of CVs. Which is a shortcut you may want to try. So again, I'll just centre the pivot and scale. Now so far we've achieved the kind of shape that we could have got from drawing a curve and using the Revolve Surface tool. So instead let's do something a bit more interesting. So now I can pick these CVs for example and then just use Move to move them off to the side. Then I could step down to these CVs and move them again to start to get a little bit of movement into my design. And then I can step back up to the top and this time I can rotate it to create maybe an instrument panel that's facing the customer. But now that the CVs are no longer in line it becomes a bit more difficult to drag select the rows of CVs. So we have a second tool called Pick Hull. And the hull is this red line connecting a row of CVs. And you can see that we've got four rows down the length of the shape. So to pick this top row I just need to click on the line, not on one of the CVs, and the whole row is selected. So now I can continue to rotate it and work with it. Now here I've copied the shape a few times so that we can look at changing the number of CVs we're working with. So I'll start with this one in the middle here. So you can see that it has CVs going around the shape and also down the length. And over here in the control panel is where we control the numbers. So if I modify this one it shows a preview of the number of CVs around the cylinder and I can accept or cancel that. And then this one will change the number up and down and this time I'll hit accept. So having fewer CVs gives us straight sides and I've just got one set of CVs down at the bottom here which I can scale to control the angle of the sides. But you may have noticed here that the reduction in CVs has caused this bottom row not to be flat anymore. But I can easily correct that by going into the 2D view, switching to move and then grid snapping and constraining vertically so that they all move vertically onto the ground plane. And I can modify the number of CVs at any time, so if I just increase the number up by one now, then I can pick those centre CVs, do a centre pivot again and then gently sculpt the shape in a more controlled way. And don't forget that moving the CVs closer together or further apart, up and down in this case, will affect the shape as well. And then finally I could also choose to increase the number of CVs which makes the surface much more flexible. So if I accept that I can then pick hulls and start to create more local shape changes. And I need to be careful to make sure I pick the right hull going in the right direction. But with more CVs I can start to create some more extreme shapes. 
So I'll just pick them all and turn off the CV so I can see the surfaces better. And if I want to finish off the shapes, I can make use of one of the surface tools, Set Planar, to create a flat surface on the top, so long as I've kept the CVs in a flat plane. And I can use the space bar as a shortcut for Go. So if I shade that up and toggle the model, you can see that you can have a lot of fun with CV sculpting. So have a go at this tutorial, or take a look at the Skill Builder example file to get some ideas of what you can do with sculpted cylinders or spheres.